All right, today we have a 1980s property. It's around 2,000 square feet. It's interesting. It's only like three bedroom, two full bath. There's no master bath in this one. And uh, whenever you're evaluating, if you want to purchase a property like this, you want to think in big pictures. You're going to hire a home inspector and they're going to call out every little thing and you can get bogged down in the report by, you know, old windows, caulking issues, you know, siding to roof contact. But really what you want to focus on is the big ticket items, roof, HVAC, plumbing, your electrical, your panel box, and everything else is, I don't know, it doesn't really matter. It, it's really what's gonna cost you the most amount of money. So let's evaluate this property. Inspector Dave is here with us. You'll see him in the background and just try to get an idea of how much this is gonna cost or what burden this is gonna put on the buyer as they move in and give them the big picture of what, what's important on this property. So the first thing we do whenever we enter a property is we like to turn the HVAC real low and then also do a quick pass and just look for major issues on the structure. And the very first thing that I noticed walking in, and it's actually, I'd say, would be a trained find and a newbie home inspector might not find this, is right here on this baseboard down here on the lower part. It's, it's kind of hard to see and why I like to really use a bright flashlight is you can kind of see some rippling right above this brand new baseboard. So you have a 1980s property, you got some weird damage down there and you have a brand new baseboard. You're like, okay, flip, flippers, what are you trying to hide here? So uh, as I got a little bit closer, you could kind of see, um, you could kind of see if I push on the wall here, it, uh, it bows and then you can see actually it's bowing through here. So as a, as a home inspector, you know, you, you can't, cut a hole in this wall, they won't let, let us. So we opened up this plate, and the reason why I did this is if this was termites, I might catch some mud or some tubes in here. I didn't find that, so the next, uh, and then I'll pound on the wall too to see if I hear any like crumbling noise or anything from the mud tubes falling out of place. And I didn't get that either, so the next thing is if it's not termites, it's probably water. So let's go outside and try to evaluate where the water could be coming from. And then also, you, you always want to look up, of course, and there's nothing above this. There's, there's no bathroom or anything like that. So um, let's try to figure out where the water's coming from. So looking at the exterior of the structure right here, um, you can see where they've patched a lot of the siding and they have fresh paint and the, paint, the paint's kind of spotty all over the place. And we have a lot of caulking around these windows and you're like, it just sends off warning signs. Also, the siding is directly to the ground too as well. You want a minimum from hard surfaces of two inches with this type of siding or it's gonna, or it's gonna rot and uh, <laughs> it's gonna rot and allow water to enter the structure. So we have, we have two signs, you know, you have siding to ground contact, which is an easy area for termites to get in. So it's harder for us to determine if it's termites or water. And then also, you, um, you have water damage on the inside of the structure. So they, it looks like they've done some sort of repairs here, but I believe it hasn't rained in a little while, but I believe that's an easy area that we have some water intrusion. Um, the other thing is, is with this siding here, this siding here is, um, it's actually kind of hard to tell because it's all painted and patched. Um, I'll get some B-roll for you underneath, but this is masonite and masonite is an older siding. And if they're not painting it, uh, it just, I mean, they have been, but you can actually start to see where it's starting to fray and damage. So one of the biggest items that they have so far is they have water penetration and they have masonite siding, and that gets pretty pricey pretty quickly, you know, for a price point of a property like this. What is this in the, the mid 200s maybe? So you already have like, you know, maybe a, a $8,000 bill of just replacing siding and fixing water damage on this whole side of the structure in the near future. It might not be immediate but you're going to run into it pretty quickly so the next thing uh that we do after we did like the the looking for the major details on the inside which that water was really the majority of it water penetration on a property there's some other little minor things that we might address here in a little bit but the next thing is the roof you know how's the structure shedding water and you can see in the back here this roof color looks pretty good on the front side it looks a lot worse but what you want to look for a lot more is um right here in this area. Let me get my laser pointer here. 
is you can start, start to see a lot of pitting in this area. So we already know that we have a roof leak in this area and then there's no kick out flashing, which if you have, oh look, they've replaced the siding here too as well. So you could see where they're replacing that masonite siding I was telling you about as it's going out, but they did it all the way to the ground too as well. So we actually don't know how bad this water damage is, is getting in behind the wall here. So we're definitely gonna bring this to the client's attention saying that the roof's not installed properly and it's not shedding water 100%. They do have a surface drain, which is nice, but um, yeah. So this is one of your next areas of concern. So you already have a you have already have roof leaks and you have siding leaks on this structure. Uh, let Let's talk about the HVAC. Okay, so we got Inspector Dave back here. He's uh, taking documenting all the HVAC. So what we got here is a rud, or some people like to call it a rude uh, um, HVAC system, and the the biggest thing on this one, it's, it's built in 1998. We ran it and we got okay differentials, but the filter was real dirty. And when you have a dirty filter, the air actually moves across the coils a little bit slower, but it actually never felt good inside. You got cold air, but it didn't feel good. So we're gonna write up the HVAC system to have an HVAC technician come out. But really, you know, as a homeowner, you wanna be evaluating like 1998, this bad boy is, you know, 24 years old. And most of the time out of your HVAC systems, you're gonna get, you know, 15 years and anything else is just bonus. So moving in, you already wanna start budgeting to replace this HVAC system. So you have an old HVAC, you have roof issues and you have siding issues. You know, you wanna start determining your budget of what you're gonna run into moving into this property. And the Houston market's so hot right now, you're probably not even gonna get a negotiation room on uh, trying to get them to repair items. You're gonna walk into these problems and then that's what you're gonna get. Okay, moving into the closet of a bedroom, we have the furnace and the coils here. One thing to pay attention to is this is a gas furnace in a closet of a bedroom. So the one of the most important things is you wanna protect, this is actually a kid's room too, but protect the kids from carbon monoxide. So you wanna have a weather strip door, which, is, which it is, and then also it needs to be self-closing. Uh, this one is not, uh, it almost never is. So you just want to pay attention to that uh, with it. And then I would actually even put a carbon monoxide alarm inside the child's bedroom too as well, just in case you're having any backdraft issues of this uh, unit. But coming over to the unit, one of the things that we see, the very first thing I notice is we have a brand new coil. So we have a brand new coils on the inside of the structure. And then we have, a you know, a 1998 condenser outside so it's like why'd you only replace half of it you know but good thing though is you might only have to replace half of it this is a uh, goodman unit this looks like a goodman coils and then outside it's rude most manufacturers don't like mixing and you might have already gotten rid of the warranty on this system too as well so uh, it's something that you can maybe actually ask the HVAC technicians or get any type of warranty paperwork that might be involved with this system because you can tell they've already been working on it. Uh, that being said, just moving on to the duct work of the system, you have this old gray, uh, gray duct work. If any sunlight hits this, it just literally falls apart. Let's, uh, we'll head up to the attic next and uh, take a look at it. But they've been using duct tape, duct tape, uh, to use this, there's actually specific tape for duct work, and this uh, duct tape is not enough. So this is obviously leaking and it's old, and you're going to run into air leaks in this type of structure too as well. So you know, already thinking about it, you have HVAC issues, you have roof issues. Um, we don't know about the electrical or plumbing yet, but let's finish this duct system. So you know, you already have water entering the property, HVAC issues, and roof issues. So if you don't have a budget to start fixing things, just move on to the next house. Okay, so coming into the attic space, just like I predicted, you can see all the gray ductwork up here, and uh, it's been crushed, and it's laying on the ground, and it's not lifted or suspended, which is going to be kind of common in these old structures. So, you know, you already have HVAC issues, you know, when it comes to re reducting. And if I had to guess, I'm not an HVAC technician, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but you know, a repair like this, you're looking at a minimum of like a five or six thousand dollar bill to replace the condenser outside and then also redo all your duct work in a structure like this so you get proper airflow. 
you can leave you can leave it like this and you'll still get air cold air but it's not going to perform properly and uh you'll get a lot of dust in your structure and you will eventually just start to just blow a lot of hum hot humid air in your in your in the living spaces and it can even cause mold so yeah this is something that you're probably going to want to address immediately um so right here we have a water heater uh that they crammed in here and it's obviously newer and it's uh, been replaced. I know it's kind of hard to see in the video, but uh, one thing that we notice right here in this area is we have water stains and uh, there's a lot of corrosion even on the temperature and pressure relief valves. So this is probably leaking. Yeah, so you're, if you see that right there. So now we have water heater issues, roof issues, you know, exterior wall leaking. Yeah, this property needs a little bit of TLC. So yeah, it looks nice. They did all a brand new kitchen, patched and painted. But you know the the big ticket items. This is where this is where it starts to hurt. And there's actually a lot of corrosion on the top of this water heater too that you can't really see. We'll maybe throw some B roll in there. Yeah. So yeah, this is a good one. So uh, James Lee just shot us a text message, and uh, uh, he's right down the street. He's like eight minutes down the road. And he found foundation issues. So let's uh let's go look at that.